Okay, well today's project is trying to troubleshoot my Santee flush because it is not flushing. Just got back from Florida, hooked my hose up to it, and no water is going into the black tank. And it just worked when I was in Florida a couple days ago. Uh, of course, you know, my first thought is, you know, maybe a bug, or uh, maybe a bug crawled up in here because I normally have this piece here on there. So I, and I didn't, I didn't put my cap on it. So there's, well, it goes like this. So there's a possibility a bug may have crawled up in there. And then when I put water, water on it, water pressure, it blew the bug up in there and sealed the hole up. I don't know. I got, that's what I'm going to try to figure out. Of course, also before I even hooked the hose up, I let, I let my water hose, because my water hose has been laying here all went along at the house I let it run for a good five minutes to flush out any bugs or critters that may have been in it so I was kind of surprised when I turned on the water pressure and nothing happened and if you're not familiar with these the, the Santa flush of course this is a Winnebago 38J and this piping runs like it's like another three foot straight up in behind the, the bathroom sink it's a real pain to get to and uh, at the top there there is a um, anti-siphon valve which gives, gave me trouble in the past. I made a video on that and I, cause it was leaking and it's a real burger to get to. I just bypassed this the goofy thing. So the pipe goes up about three foot, turns around, comes back down and runs right, right here. You, you just follow the pipe and it runs right here. Now in this place here, supposedly that's a little clean jets is right in behind this. So, my first step is to take this loose. I got me this handy little tool, which is very nice to have when you're working on your RV with these type of PEX fittings, because you can see how you can get a hold of it and give it a turn. Really works nice. I'll, I'll try to put a link to this tool in, in the notes here. So I'm gonna get this loose, and I'm gonna see if this line is clear. If it's clear between here and, and the outside, then I know the problem is right here in the jet. And we'll have to figure out how to get that cleaned out. So let's get it, get it apart. Okay, well I came in the RV to get me a hair dryer to warm, warm that fitting up before I go yanking and breaking something. I was just going to show you that little Acme valve is right in right in behind here. You can never dream that's where it's at, but it's but I bypassed it, so I have no more Acme valve. I just got to, I think I just put a 90 in there to, uh, to to bypass it and the pipe comes up and shoots right back down into the area I'm working on. So just thought I'd show you the location of that if you ever have a problem or, or if you happen to see a few drops of water down here it'll be from that goofy uh, valve that's that's located in there and, and I got a video on that if you just search uh, Acme valve or a vacuum valve something like that. All right let me go back outside. Okay well, I'm back under here so I've got my got that little fitting off but it's still very tight so I've got my hair dryer under here and I'm gonna warm this up and because you know you go tugging on this you could e easily break that fitting and ruin your day so I'm going to try to get that heated up with the hair dryer so I can slip that off a little more easier because remember always ask yourself how many ways can this go wrong well I could yank and tug on that thing and of course break that off and that would be bad well, you, you can see I got it off, but uh, using that hair dryer, I really had to get it good and warm because you see it's got that sharp barb and it's been on there for, of course, 15 years. And it took a little working back and forth. I finally got it pulled off without breaking anything. So um, now we just got to see what the problem is. Okay, test one. I got my air compressor out. So my jet, that, that part is clear. All right. Try the other side here. Okay, it's blowing clear. All right, so the maybe, because it wouldn't do that with water pressure, because I got 150 PSI on it. So let, now let me go back to the water line and see what it does. Okay, now it looks like we got good flow. Let's turn this on. You see the water coming in. I just redirected the pipe down here to the wet base, so it's not getting anything wet in here. So I suspect we had a, uh, a bug or something must have got in there because when I was traveling, I didn't put my cap on. So maybe a little critter got up in there and uh, just 55 PSI of water wasn't enough to blow it out. But putting that 150 PSI must have shot it on out, whatever it was. So now I'll hook my hose, my PEX line back up to the tank 
and give it another test. So once again, I just want to show you how good this little tool works. Because I, I can only get like one click at a time. But it works very well. And I could use channel locks, but he'd probably chew it all up. And this works quite well. Great tool to have in your toolbox. Get this snugged up and we'll give it another test here in just a second. Okay, so while I'm under here, now this being a 38J, you may, yours may look different because there used to be a metal plate that sat here. I got rid of it because it made it so much more handier to get in there and see what's going on. And you can see I, I added that light. But I was wanting to point out, uh, see that little gray piece of hose? I put that over that line because that line was rubbing across that sharp edge. I find a lot of places like that where these PEX lines run across sharp edges and they're not really protected very well just to keep uh, any future leaks at bay. All right, so let's give it a test. Okay, got my finger on the button. Here we go. There it is. It is working. All right, we're supposed to do. Well, that wasn't so bad. So while that's filling up, and I'll get, it, get this tank a good, a good flush. One thing I'm also I'm going to do, I'm going to let it fill completely full, and we'll come back in here and make sure it's fitting, because then we'll have, we'll make sure it's not leaking here at that position, because I did move that just a little bit. And in the, in the past, I did have, it was leaking on me. I had to take it off, put some dope on it, and put it back on. I was getting a few drops of you know what coming out of there a couple years ago so i'll let that fill up completely make sure we have no no leaks let me let it sit there a while before i actually dump it uh while i'm waiting on that i just want to point out to you my little compressor i've had this thing for years for portal portal cable 150 psi it's a great little compressor well, i've got the 22.5 tires you need something it's got 150 psi and there's this model number don't know if they still make them or not, but it's fairly lightweight. I wanted lightweight, small package to, to carry in the RV. Works great. All right. Okay, I'm back in my computer now. I just want to show you what we was looking at. Well, let's talk about that. Um, the anti-siphon valve that's up behind the cabinet right there, that is. And there's also a check valve in there. So I, I, I kept the check valve in place. I just eliminated the anti-siphon valve and put my 90 degree in there. And I know I need to get me an uh, anti-siphon valve to put out here on this end one of these days. That's my goal. But anyway, I suspect we had a little something must have gotten that check valve was causing the block. When I ran that 150 PSI, that was able to get, get it blow, blowed out. Then, because my also was my concern, I was also worried about... I've seen in some RVs, your, the nozzle is, you can take it out and clean it, but ours is not because it's called, where'd it go here? Now there it is, nozzle well to flush. So it's my suspicion right there it is. That component is kind of like, like well, they got sonic welding into the bottom of the tank. And you can see the little nozzles in it. So I, I was afraid that maybe those nozzles were plugged up. But, uh, but it wasn't, I think it was just a check valve. So it looks like all that is, is in good shape now. Well, just a little bit more of observation. Um, remember how that picture I showed you where it was called that weld something nozzle? We had the little holes in it, which it's like, I guess, sonically welded right in here. And it's only got just a few, few holes drilled into it. So I guess the only place it's really clean and any good is, is right here where these sensors are. Because there's, it's not like it's a long wand that goes all the way back. To, you know, it's a big long tank. It goes all the way to, to the other side, to the other side of the RV. So it doesn't do anything for the rest of it at all. But it does keep, I guess, the back side of the sensors clean. And keep in mind, these type of sensors don't protrude through the tank. There's no hole. These are just peel and stick. They, um, they create some sort of frequency and it just detects when there's water on the back side and, and trips the light. So um, I guess that's their whole goal is just to keep this area clean so the sensors can do their job. Not so much uh, the rest of the tank. So I guess, I guess that's where it's a good idea just to fill it completely full fresh water and, 
and then dump it several times. That's that's what I've been doing. Just so I thought I'd add that. All right. Well, seeing I'm fooling with the dirty end of things today, I, I'm gonna doing some experimentation because that filling up the black tank to do a flush on and on it it seems just to take forever and we've already established you know those little jets all they're really doing is just spraying the back side of that um of that sensor so i thought well if i want a quicker process how could i do that well i've got this little device which they're handy to have they're, it really doesn't do anything far as you know it originally had a little nozzle and i drilled it out i took me a 5 8 paddle bit and bored it out it had a little bitty hole these are designed, I guess, maybe for some black tanks where it fits right on the end. You could shoot a spray, a straight nozzle, a powerful spray right down the throat of it. But with, with this application, it wouldn't do hoop because it's just going straight up into the Y. So I bored it out so I can get quick flow. So I'm thinking this way I can get, I can fill up both the black and gray tank really quick and dump them right back out uh, because I got this little adapter on here. It's quite handy to have. So, like I told you, I drilled it out with a with a five eighths paddle bit, and then I'm up. Well, again, I need me a seal. Put my seal in there, and then I'm going to this on here. I'm gonna hook my hose to it, and I'm gonna see if I can't get a whole lot quicker process as far as filling the tank and and dumping it out. Let's see how it goes. Okay, as you can see, I got the hose hooked up right there. Now I'm going to open this up because you want to make sure the water has somewhere to go because if you have this stuff closed off and you kick on 55 PSI, something's going to break. So we're going to open this up. I'll go turn on the water spigot and the flow will start coming down the hose and then I'll open these up and close it and see how quick the tanks fill up then. Okay, now for the test. You see I got the hose hooked up underneath here. It's running wide open. Because at the moment it's just, you know, the black and gray are both shut off. So it's just going up in here and running right back down to the sewer. So I'm going to open up the gray. Now close this. Oops. There we go. Alright, so now the gray is open and the water is being forced up into the gray tank. I'm also going to open up the black. So we'll have We'll have water going into both. And we'll go up there and see what happens, what my lights look like. Okay, it's a race. We'll see what which one fills up quickest here. Okay, looks like the gray takes winning. It's getting getting filled up first. Hey, like my alarm system. Cool. You can make yours, you know. All right, what's loud? All right, so now I've shut the gray off. Now water is only being forced up into the black tank. Let's go wait for it to start beeping. I hear it. All right, they're both going off now. All righty. So both tanks are now full. Now let's see what kind of flush we get. Now that I know the tank was completely full, I'm gonna make sure I got no leaks over here. Yep, all is dry. That's good. Another, having this little adapter back here, the one I drilled a hole in, those are handy to keep, you know, in case you ever do get a, a, a plugged line, you can uh, use that to apply back pressure and, and push it out. So uh, that'd be something good to keep on hand if you ever got a clog. Of course, with our system, the way the pipes are designed, I've never had any issues with it. Because you see how my black tank is, because it's a big three inch pipes that come straight out. So, I mean, I don't I don't use that crazy John Wayne toilet paper. I use the good stuff, the flush pipes, anything and everything. I've never had a clog, never had an issue in 10 years. So, uh, that's working out pretty good. Seems to be a lot faster. Okay, I'm just experimenting and playing around. So this time I'm going to see how much quicker it fills up the black tank. See if it's uh, much difference going this way versus going through that small jet. I assume it would be, would be a lot quicker. Okay, it just went off. Noisy thing. 
it took, took five minutes. I don't, I don't know if it, I think it's quicker than the, the, the jet, it seems to be. Well, I think I'm going to fill this up just one more time and call it a night. Uh, but I do like this idea. At least it gives me a plan B, you know. So in case anything happened to your sandy flush, get a bug, the jet plugs up, anything. Because remember, all that jet does is really just cleaning the back side of those sensors. It's not doing any, anything for the rest of the tank. Um, so this does give you a second option as far as getting water, clean, fresh water into the black and gray tank quickly and getting a dump. So I, I think this is probably about the fourth uh, fill and drain I've done on it. So I'll do this one more time and uh, button it up. And one more thing for your toolbox maybe. I've had, I packed this around for a couple of years because these uh, gate, these valves are like 15 years old. So it's just a matter of time before they fail. So I got one ready to go if it ever, if it ever starts leaking or give me trouble. Okay, this will be the last dump. Let's see how clear it is. That looks pretty good. Okay class, so what was today's lesson? Today's lesson is cap your fittings. When, when, you're, when you're traveling or you're not, you've got a hose hooked up. Keep the bugs out. So, got them capped off. I'll start doing that from now on. And also, I don't know if you know this or not. If you got a 38J, I didn't realize this when I first got mine. You can tuck a whole lot of your hose up and behind these lines like this for storage because sometimes it gets crowded down here but you just start starting it feeding it from the bottom and get away up in there and get stuff out of your way and have a little extra room Alrighty, it's a little longer than i thought it was going to be but thanks for watching and have a great day